Welcome to this recorded message for Sunday, May the 10th. And thank you for joining with me for this uh, discussion and consideration of God's Word. But let's just come together in prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you our thanks that despite the situation in which we find ourselves, that we are able to hear your word and to take time, Lord, in your presence to praise you and to bless you. We come, Father, grateful and rejoicing that the victory can be ours in Christ. And we come, therefore, Father, to praise you and to thank you for your great plan of salvation. We come, Lord, rejoicing that you are the the, the God who is the same yesterday and today and forever. And Father, as we come to, to, to consider your word at this time, we pray, Father God, that we would know your presence, that your spirit might be active wherever we might be. And Lord, we do pray that all the praise and the glory might be given only to you. So we commit these things to you and ask, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I'd like to share some verses from Matthew's Gospel and chapter 8. It's uh, verses 23 to 27, and it's the passage where we read of Jesus calming the storm. Then Jesus got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Around nine years ago, there was a a terrible storm, Storm Udo, which battered much of Scotland as well as other parts of the UK. And one of the reasons I can recall that storm is that my wife and I had been guests at a wedding in the Cotswolds on the third weekend in May that year. And we found ourselves struggling to get home to Aloha in the aftermath of the storm. I have a recollection of us being virtually stranded in Edinburgh as almost no public transport was running. But we eventually managed to get a service bus which took us a long roundabout road to Stirling. We then found ourselves in Stirling fairly late at night, with the only option available to us being a taxi which finally got us home pretty tired and exhausted. It was a storm which, given the month of the year, we would probably not have expected. But it caused significant damage in many places. One of the trees in the man's garden was brought down in that storm, and the remnants of that tree are still visible today. When we think of life itself, we can say that we often have to cope with great difficulties, difficulties which we might sometimes describe as storms. Friday, May the 8th, was the 75th anniversary of VE Day, and despite the current lockdown, the day was marked, victory was remembered, and those who lost their lives in the Second World War were brought to mind. And anyone who was alive in those years, and who is old enough to remember what happened, will be aware that the situation was far from easy. There were great difficulties, which might be described as storms. I wanted in this address to consider how we might deal with the storms which come our way in life, and how we ought to respond to these storms. Hence the title which I've given this address. What can we learn in life storms? What can we learn in life storms? 
And the background to what I'd like to say is the cut in the current situ- is the current situation with which we are all having to cope with the coronavirus. There are three comments which I'd like to share in this address. And the first is that we have to expect storms. We have to expect storms. As regards the situation in which we find ourselves with the coronavirus, I have to say that I was totally taken aback when I first heard about what was happening in some other parts of the world, and even more so when it reached the UK. To be honest, I had never really considered that there would ever be such a pandemic. Now, maybe I should have considered that possibility. After all, we do find in the Bible mention of pestilences and plagues. And we have to believe that what the Bible has to say is relevant for us today. Biblical warnings are there for a reason. But I was totally unprepared for such a situation. That doesn't mean, though, that I was living with the idea that we can simply live our lives without ever experiencing any problems or difficulties. No matter our age, we must all know, I think, that life is never a bed of roses. To varying degrees, we all have to deal with life's storms. I have to say that I've never met anyone whom I would believe has simply sailed through life without any difficulties. Storms have to be expected. And the disciples were no different from us in that regard. I wonder though whether some people think that storms come into their lives only when they've disobeyed God. We may well have met people who've asked us, what they ever did to deserve some difficulty which they were experiencing. I have to say that I don't believe that such thinking is in agreement with the teaching of the Bible because although, for example, Jonah ended up in a storm because of his disobedience, the disciples, as we discover in this passage, ended up in a storm when there is no record of any particular disobedience. The familiar story about the disciples in the storm has, though, a great deal to say to us today in the midst of the troubles which we are currently having to cope. We probably know well what Matthew records for us. We are told that Jesus and his disciples got into a boat on the lake on the Sea of Galilee. Now, in actual fact, sudden storms were not unusual in that part of the world. And without warning, a terrible storm blew up. In other words, a storm which was so sudden, unexpected and fierce, that it frightened experienced fishermen like the disciples. And the result was that the waves were breaking over the boat, and the boat became filled with water. Did the disciples expect the storm? Probably not. But the fact that it happened is an illustration for us of the first point which I'd like to make today. The fact that we all have to expect storms. Can I ask if we generally live with that expectation? Are we in fact prepared for difficulties in our lives? The second point that I'd like to share is that we can trust Jesus in storms. We can trust Jesus in storms. The disciples had already seen Jesus' power demonstrated in his miracles. They had heard him teach God's word. And so they should have had complete confidence that he could handle the situation. They should not have feared for their lives. But for some reason, the disciples did not yet understand that Jesus is the master of every situation. As yet, they had no real faith. And that was their real problem. Their cowardly terror was a demonstration of the fact that they had no real faith in Jesus. 
and what the disciples needed and what we all need today is the faith that Jesus can be trusted in life's storms. Jesus, in fact, promises to take his people through life's storms, even although they don't know total relief from trouble. There's a chorus which I learned many years ago, the words of which are particularly appropriate here. With Jesus in the, in the boat, you can smile at the storm as you go sailing home. And in many ways, that's a lesson for believers today, believers who find themselves in trouble. Jesus promises to be with them. He promises to be their strength in the storms which life throws at them. And thinking again about the situation in which we find the disciples in these verses, it does seem pretty strange that they seem to believe that they might all drown. Because if Jesus had drowned, as they obviously feared, then he could not have carried out his mission. Isaiah, for example, tells us that Jesus came to the earth for a reason, namely to be the suffering servant, to die in our place, to pay the price of our salvation. And the disciples ought to have known that truth. But although it seems that they had some trust in Jesus, it's unclear whether they really believed him to be the Son of God. Because the Son of God would never have been lost in a storm. Jesus is the master of every situation, not just of some situations, as the disciples seem to think. The question for us all has to be whether we believe Jesus to be in control of every situation which might come our way. And more than that, have we a living faith in Jesus? In my mind, the problems and difficulties which we are currently experiencing can cause us to do one of two things. To turn completely away from God and to say that he doesn't care about our situation, even that if he really loved us, he would do something about our situation. Or to run to him for mercy, aware that it's only he who is able to lead us through. There are many things in life which we cannot ever understand. But I do believe that God still loves us. And the response which he seeks is that we turn from our sin, that we place our trust in what Jesus did for us on the cross at Calvary. Because he offers forgiveness, new life, eternal life for all who place their trust in him. We are called to trust in Jesus no matter what's happening in our lives, but perhaps especially in life's storms. And could it be that God might be using the current situation to speak to you about your need to turn to him in faith? Might this be your time to receive the gift of salvation for your sin and of a new life in Christ? The second point that I like to share. And let's move to the third point, And that is that we can know peace in storms. We can know peace in storms. In my mind, many people today are anxious about our current situation. They do not seem to know any peace. And in a certain way, I actually understand that. But what I'd like to underline is that if we have faith in Jesus, then we ought to know peace. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, can indeed be ours. And turning to this passage, it's worth commenting on what had taken place just before this storm. Jesus had been teaching his disciples. In many ways, he probably wanted to discover whether they were able to put the lessons which they had learned into practice. The hearing of God's word is, after all, meant to produce faith. And that faith needs to be tested. It isn't enough to merely learn a lesson 
or to be able to repeat a passage of scripture. There's the need to practice that lesson by faith. And that, I believe, is why God allows trials to come into our lives. We might well ask the question whether Jesus knew that the storm was coming. And I'd have to say that I do believe that he knew. He believed that the storm was God's will for him and for the disciples. And so in the midst of the storm, Jesus had no fear. He knew that his father would care for him. And so he took a much required rest. I find it interesting to consider the fact that Jonah slept during the storm because he had a false sense of security, even although he was running away from God. But on the contrary, Jesus slept in the storm because he was truly secure in the will of God. And the reality, and the point to underline, is that Jesus was at peace in the storm. The question then is whether such peace is ours. We might well be fearful today. We may have lots of concerns. Life at the moment is certainly pretty difficult. We wonder if and when we'll ever get back to any semblance of normality. But I do believe that peace can still be ours. Here's a poem which I found years ago, which I believe can speak to us today and help us to understand something about life's troubles. God hath not promised skies ever blue, flower strewn pathways all our lives through. God hath not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God hath promised strength for the day, rest for the labour, light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing kindness, undying love. If a living faith in Jesus Christ is ours, then we can know the victory through all the troubles, because we have someone who has promised to be with us and to give us his strength, his grace, his help, his love, his peace. It would be my prayer that the situation in which we find ourselves with this lockdown may be one where we are able to ask ourselves where we stand as far as faith in Jesus is concerned. Is such faith ours? And if it is, are we experiencing his peace even today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are the God of all peace. Lord, we live in an uncertain world. We live in a world, Father God, where we don't necessarily know what the rest of today or tomorrow might bring to us. But Lord, we pray that we might know the truth of your word and that we might experience as we come to as we are trusting in Jesus, that we might experience the peace and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, grant us your peace. Grant us, Lord, to, to know that you are the God who has promised to be with his people. And surely, Lord, if we have faith in Christ, then you are with us to lead us and to guide us by your Spirit. We pray for our world in these days. We pray, Father God, for our own community and our own society, for the lonely, the isolated, those, Lord, whose finances have been turned upside down by all that's happened in the last two months. We ask, Father God, for the bereaved, that they might know the, the comfort and the peace of Christ. We pray, Father, for those who are suffering with COVID-19, that you might lay your healing hand upon them, Lord, and if it's your will, Lord, that you might bring them through. We ask, Lord, for our national leaders, that they would seek your guidance and your direction. We pray, Lord, that you would help us and that you would indeed be our strength. And Lord, as we give you thanks for 
the VE Day celebrations which have recently taken place. We give you thanks, Lord, for answers to prayer during the Second World War. And we thank you, Father God, that you are a God who has proved himself to be faithful. Lord, we do pray for all our people. We ask, Father God, that you might be with us. And Lord, we pray that in your will, that before too long, that we might be able to meet together once more in the church sanctuary. We bring this before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.